Welcome to another edition of the Gold Nose Podcast. I am your host, Gregory McCoy. This podcast is by a fan for fans. I am not a journalist. I am not a reporter. I am not an insider. I do not work for a website. The majority of my content comes from me. In my opinion, other information comes from the Internet. Today is February 9th, 2020. I got about five different segments here for this episode. I hope you enjoy it. Let's go ahead and get started. First segment is entitled, What Makes an Explosive Player? And here's what I wrote about that. What makes an explosive player? Well, first, you have to be blessed with talent. I think as much training as one person can do to be well conditioned, there are certain God-given abilities that some people have and some people don't. Then there's the desire uh, to be the very best. Many times um, we have seen elite talent with no heart or desire. Um, My 10th grade year, there was a guy, there was a guy that was 6'5", 180 pounds, roughly. Uh, He was a 10th grader also. He was mossing kids before mossing was even a term. And he decided that the streets were more important. My point is the mental and physical have to coincide for an explosive player to be explosive. Um, Then I would say probably the second most important thing is uh, elite training. If a player has talent along with tremendous training, um, to me, that creates an explosive player. Um, You know. Being an explosive player, I mean, you have to have certain God-given abilities. I mean, I don't think that's just something that you can just go into, you know, a a fitness center or one of those combine places and just train and train and train and it just comes. Um, You have to have certain God-given abilities. Um, And then you have to have the work ethic. And if you can do all that and put it all together, then you'll be an explosive talent. Um, We've seen many players go through college football, the pro football, tons of talent, nothing inside. And it all has to, you know, even out to be a talented player and an explosive player. Um, So let me know what you think about that segment in the comments. And the next segment is entitled, Will the 20... 21 class be better and here's what i wrote about that yes i think the 21 or excuse me the 2021 class will be better um i have to say kudos to mike norvell for not selling false hopes and dreams um it says a lot about a coach when he's completely honest in the recruiting process um My philosophy still remains the same. I don't uh, critique high school players until they've been on campus for one year. And um, my prediction based on 2020 and how Norvell got two quarterback commitments in less than, what, 30 days? It's probably less than that. The 2021 class will be a top 10 class. Um, If... The Florida State football team looks competitive in every game. Norvell, I mean, uh, recruits do look at that. Uh, Norvell has some top commits already in the 2021 class. Uh, With a full year to get everything aligned and in the right direction, uh, who knows? This class could possibly end up in the top five. Um, I think uh, all the Florida State fans would love to get our recruiting back in the top 10. We've uh, fallen off the last several years, and uh, we would love to start getting that type of talent again and, you know, make our way back to the college football playoff. Um, You know, I just think, uh, again, I have to give him kudos for not selling false hopes and dreams and, you know, just being genuine. Like many of the recruits said and many of the players on the team stated, genuine guy. So um, let me know what you think about that segment in the uh, comments. Uh, 
Next segment is entitled Florida State has a very diverse running back group. They have speed guys, power guys, multi-purpose guys, third down guys. In a previous episode, in a previous episode, I stated that Kalen LeBourne has to emerge this year and live up to the hype. I think he can and will. He's the all-around back that fits great into Norvell's offense. Corbin and Cook, to me, will be the power guys. But they can do a multitude of things also. Webb, to me, is a scat back. And that's not a knock on him. Every offense should have one of those guys. The Darren Sproles type back. Um, Tua Philly hasn't played a game yet. So, again, sticking with my philosophy, I don't analyze recruits until they've been on campus for one year um they also have two walk-ons i forget their name they look pretty good in the bowl game against arizona state uh, maybe they can figure in some kind of way and get some playing time um the key to everything is putting the right combination of offensive linemen out there well even before you do that you got to get the, the um the strength and conditioning on point um, once you do that then you find the right combination of offensive linemen and hopefully the running game can take can take off uh, like i said in a previous episode i think florida state is going to be a running team this year and um, my prediction is if everything goes right they could run for, for maybe 2000 to 2500 yards that would be a great year first year under Mike Norvell um, so my thoughts on this segment is um, all these guys are going to play um, I don't Kalen LeBourne hasn't done anything to warrant exclusive carries he's not Cam Akers now if he I'm pretty sure he's going to be the starter and if he goes out there and just you know tears it up then okay but as we sit right here today february 9th 2020 he's gonna have to share the ball with the other guys and uh you know we'll see what happens man um i'm pulling for these guys um i hope they all have great years or a great a great season this coming season and we'll see what happens let me know what you think about this segment segment now, when I first started my podcast, if you ever read like the uh, title or not the title, but like the uh, I don't know what it's called, but it's just your description of your podcast. I said the primary focus is uh, Knowles football. And then I talk about some other stuff and I've sprinkled some stuff in. Um, I've talked about boxing and um, uh, cartoons and. Uh, basketball and uh, the NFL well what used to be one of my favorite pastimes until about five or five to ten years ago was professional wrestling WWE and uh, it's re pro wrestling just isn't the same anymore and here's what I wrote about that pro wrestling just isn't the same back when I was a kid Wrestling was my favorite sport, if you want to call it a sport. Now, now I know some of you uh, rabid Florida State fans are like, this is the Gold Nose podcast, and it is. But like I said in the opening of this segment, primary focus, nose football, and other stuff. So, wrestling sucks, in my opinion, right now. Wrestling used to be a mythical you know thing to me um a guy really got into his gimmick now it just doesn't feel that way you know for example rick flair bret hart Shawn michaels um the rock stone cold hulk hogan sting um it's just the wrestling to me professional wrestlers are some of the greatest actors in the world used to be anyway um now it's just it's just not the same man um it's just more about entertainment it's not really you know 
becoming one with the character, you know, while you're on TV. You know, some of these guys, you know, take on the character and become their character in real life. I'm not saying do that, but at least do it while on while you're on TV. It's just the acting is bad. And in the in ring, you know, you don't have a lot of talented wrestlers. I think you got Daniel Bryan. I like Dolph Ziegler. I like The Miz. I like Kofi Kingston. You know, um, you just don't have a lot of in ring talent. But I, I, when I was a kid and it was the off season for football, this is what I turned to professional wrestling. And. You know that the void. I just have to do other things to fill that void now. Um, I'm trying to get back to where I was reading. Um, watching wrestling back in the day, it was like Broadway. These guys were some of the best actors in the world. I loved it. Now it's just like I said, entertainment. It sucks because wrestling used to fill the football void, like I just said a minute ago. Um, yeah, man. So let me know what you think about that segment. Um, you know, WWE pretty much has a monopoly on wrestling. You got the AEW thing. I haven't been able to catch an episode on that. If you have watched AEW, let me know what you think about it. Um, and for this segment, let me know what you think about it in the comments. I'm going to move on to my last segment for this episode, which is entitled if florida state was a movie what would it be and here's what i wrote about that if florida state was a movie what would it be i can't narrow it down to just one movie it has to be a multitude of movies uh, rocky one rocky two the manchurian candidate and tropic thunder all right first rocky one and two Clemson is the Apollo Creed of the ACC, and we're trying to knock them out. We haven't had much success the last five years. Hopefully, we can keep building and training, and we can, you know, be competitive with these guys in the next couple years and eventually start beating them again. Um, why the Manchurian candidate? With all these four and five stars on the roster, it's like they've gotten taken over by a um, different team. And, you know, there's imposters playing in Florida State uniforms. Um, the Manchurian candidate was based on a imposter taking over as president. I do believe that was the premise of the movie. Um, but, you, you know, I, I can't remember exactly, but you know what I'm saying. Like, these four and five stars on our team haven't lived up to the billing. Um, lastly, why Tropic Thunder? All right. And we know Tropic Thunder was a comedy. And I'm not saying that Florida State in any way, uh, that Florida State football in any way is a comedy. The premise of the movie is that a bunch of actors got dropped off in a real war zone and they thought it was a movie set. And I apply that same premise to Florida State. Um, some of these recruits who came to Florida State didn't realize the expectations here. And how high they were. And what was expected. Championships, conference championships, national championships. And they thought that just putting on the Florida State uniform was just going to automatically equal wins doesn't work like that guys um you got to put in the work you got to put in the time and you got to go out there and compete for four quarters i mean clemson loves destroying us they really do um you can just tell you can just tell how they play for the quarter or half if we're lucky if we can actually be competitive with them for a quarter or half I mean, I think the goal this year is just to be competitive for four quarters, make it a close game. Um, you know, LSU laid out the blueprint. Ohio State laid out the blueprint. I mean, I think we, with with proper coaching, I think we've got just amount, just as much talent as they do. So, um, let me know what you think about this episode. 
Um, it's available on YouTube. It's available on Apple Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify Podcasts. If you're listening to this on YouTube, please scroll down to the to the description. Click on one of the links. Rate, review, subscribe. If you like listening to it on YouTube, continue to listen to it on YouTube. But please do that for me. I would really appreciate it. And as always, go nose.